Hey guys, Mr. Hein here, and today we are going to be talking about forces. Please follow along on your note sheet as I go through this information, and we're going to figure out what a force is and how it relates to motion. So what is a force? Uh, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi here telling us the force will be with us always, and uh, that is somewhat true, but we're not talking about that force. We're talking about a push or a pull on an object, and these cause changes in motion. So motion happens because of various forces that are present. And we're specifically, we're looking at forces causing acceleration. And we just talked about acceleration. So remember, acceleration can happen when something starts to move, when something stops moving, uh, if we turn or change direction, if we slow down, or if we speed up. In other words, a change in magnitude or direction or magnitude and direction uh, will lead to acceleration. In pictures, we can represent forces with arrows, and so I'm going to draw some arrows on these images to show the forces that are present. I'll use a big arrow to show a larger force and a smaller arrow to show a smaller force. We always have lots of forces acting on our objects, so with our ball rolling down the hill, um, gravity is pulling that ball down the hill, so we that's a pretty strong force. We're going to put a big arrow going downward, showing that direction. And we also are going to have a little bit of friction, since the ball is rolling against a surface, that will be moving in the opposite direction, slowing the ball down a little bit. Over here we have a car hitting a wall. The car is moving into the wall with a certain amount of force. Unfortunately for the car, the wall is giving a much bigger force in the opposite direction, and so it gets crunched. Go ahead and draw those arrows in your images on your note sheet. So as we just saw, we're rarely going to have just one force acting on an object, especially here on Earth. We're going to have multiple. There's always gravity, and there's always other things that are affecting uh, the motion of things around us. So uh, what we need to do is combine those forces together to figure out something called the net force. And the net force is just the combination of all forces acting on an object. We can calculate net force in a way that is similar to what we did with resultant velocity. And the way we're going to do that is if they are moving in the same direction, then we will add the forces together. And quick side note, um, forces are measured in what we call Newtons, which we've seen with weight before. And that is represented with a capital N. So those are the units I'm going to be using through these practice problems. In our first situation here, we have two guys, and unfortunately their car is broken down, so they are going to have to push it down the road. One guy push, pushes with a force of 100 newtons, and one guy pushes with a force of 150 newtons, and they're both pushing towards the right. So to find our net force, we're going to have to add those together, and we'll add 100 newtons to 150 newtons. And that's going to give us a total of 250 newtons, and they are moving towards the right. So the result is that the car will move in the direction of their force uh, with a force of 250 newtons, which we see with this arrow right here. Sometimes, however, our forces will be moving in opposite directions, and if that's the case, then we're going to need to subtract the forces to get our net force. So here, 
uh, one guy has decided to um, have a little challenge with his friend and now he's going to push in the opposite direction so they can see where the car will move. The guy on the left is pushing with 150 newtons of force to the right and our guy over here is pushing with 100 newtons of force to the left. These are in opposite directions so we'll subtract and we'll see that 150 newtons minus 100 newtons is going to give us a net force of 50 newtons and it's going to be moving in the direction of our largest force so this will be moving to the right and the result is that the car will move to the right but slowly because we have the other guy pushing trying to push back with his force this leads us to something called balanced and unbalanced forces. So not only can we uh, describe this net force, but we can describe the net force as either balanced or unbalanced. Let's take a look at that. Balanced forces are going to be equal in magnitude, which is size, but opposite in direction. So that might look like this. We have two guys pushing. They are pushing in opposite directions with an equal amount of force. The result is you have a net force of zero newtons. And what does that mean for the object's motion? What do you think? Will it speed up, slow down, turn, or will nothing happen? The answer is that there will be no motion or no acceleration because they are canceling each other out. On the flip side, we have unbalanced forces. These are forces that are unequal, so either their magnitude or their direction will be different, or both. And that's going to mean that their net force is greater than zero newtons. So what does that mean for their motion? Are they going to cause an object to speed up, slow down, turn, or cause no change in motion? The correct answer is that they will cause a change in motion. If we look at this truck as an example, if it's driving with a force of 100 newtons to the right, and there's some friction on the road that it is creating a force of 60 newtons in the opposite direction. Since they're opposites, uh, they are unbalanced. And the net result is that the truck will move in this direction because its force is greater than the smaller force pushing against it. So that's forces and now you should be able to calculate net force and figure out if forces are balanced or unbalanced and we will be practicing with that some more in class today. All right, ask me if you have any questions guys and have a good day.